so I was just looking at everybody. And I never felt a sense of, of Canadian-ness or American-ness or European-ness. It was just like, wow, I'm part of this big tribe and just, you know, puts words and pictures together. And they come up with these really I think Chet's success with uh, Louis Riel has sort of refocused Canadian talent in a certain way. So it, well, this, it's more well, of an issue was, now than it was. This is what I was going to get at. Was I find now at this point, what I'm interested in doing is that the next project is that is um, an autobiographical work of going out as a mercy and brand. So it's going to be as hardcore Canadian as you can get. It's taken me this long in my life to get to the point where I really do want to come to that self reflective. So I want to say, what makes me Canadian? What's the nature of my own personal Canadianness? And celebrate it and communicate it through this wonderful medium. So, yeah, and everything else was kind of green. We can come out here once you I was asking him on the way over here. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. Um, also, just to, with Vortex, that was where Chester Brown was first published in Yummy Fur. Yep. So it is a bit of a. Well, I, I just I wanted to say that, you know, for us, certainly, uh, you know, Canada has maybe not had such a huge uh, overt impact on what we do, but Toronto absolutely has. And, you know, for us, the, the climate, again, 25 years ago when we started to make comics here, um, it was uh, so rich, and there were so many people working, and, and you could just see them on the street. But even you know, beyond all of that, you could get on the streetcar and go down the road to Andromeda and sit in the office of a distributor, and that made all the difference for us. So it was um, things like that made it even more possible for us to make work. You know, that we could go and, and have uh, Bill Marks reject us in person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. Let me tell you. Uh, uh, but but you know really you know a distributor uh, and publishers in this city made a huge difference for us in terms of what we thought was possible. More recently, we had the Canada Reads with uh, Jeff Lemire's Essex oh, County, which got a. Go. <laughs> um, how does that feel like seeing you know a really great Canadian work kind of? get to this point and then not really be fully accepted? I don't know. I, our book was in the, the long list of that category thing. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it, what do you mean it not accepted? It's part of the top 10. Well, didn't 40. Well, there was the, uh, got to the top I, Yeah, but then it was, but they, then it was not. It. There was that on the debacle. Yeah. Oh, was there a debacle? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, there were, you know, uh, she, uh, and by she, I mean Debbie Travis. She voted she for- She of the paint yes, with the toothbrush the over, over the, okay. <laughs> she Got voted it. for a book she hadn't read. What? Uh, to stay, and voted Essex County out based on principle that it wasn't the book. Now she hadn't read one of the five books she was going right, to read, right. but she let it pass through, unread, and voted Essex County out. I think it's a huger success, though, for it to be included in it in the, in the first place. I mean, I, I think that the CBC, uh, when our book came out in 2008, they were all over it. I mean, they had a month of the CBC Book Club uh, talking about graphic novels, and there is such a huge gap still with um, acceptance and knowing what a graphic novel is and and what, you know, why is comic a weird word? And, but they, I mean, the, the gap, Chairman or generals or included. I mean, um, you want to just let people know what that is. A lot of folks may not know what happened. Okay, well, our book was nominated for governor general, but it was for the text. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like so bizarre, and it, it's just it's just a growing pain. I kind of see that as you know, it's it's an acceptance, but it's like a not fully understand. But you can't expect people to just sort of be instantly aware of the canon um, of what comics are, how comics are produced. You know. Their, their history and everything else, um, but to, for them to even sort of have like a little bit of acceptance, the, the, the knowledge will come and sort of like the, the respect and sort of the, um, uh, to understand in a, in a more complete way will come with time. But the fact that they're not sort of a ghettoized thing anymore is, is a huge step in it. And, and uh, so the CBC has done, I think, not to totally defend the CBC, but you're right. But I mean, I think that they were very, very supportive of, of our book, at least. Yeah. Well, and regardless of what happened with Essex County, with Canada Reads, um, you know, 
we can say that because we we'll skipped there. <laughs> well, <laughs> except that you know, you know who that was really good for? That was really good for Top Shelf, and that's really good for comics. So yeah, I mean, yeah. who yeah. cares about right. Canada Reads? Well, you know, that was it. really great for the publisher, which is really great for it's all of us. for the next day. You know, that that book was all over the media for the next day. It was right. a huge discussion. Yeah. And that's that makes it. And the debate yeah. stirs. Sales <laughs> and yeah. stirs conversation. Like I couldn't believe it. Like when the governor had to bring that up again. But I mean, it was a news headline, you know, on the CBC website that you know you're talking about the nature of storytelling in comics as a genre, as like a news headline. It was phenomenal. So that's the, again, I, I agree. I think it sort of it comes out in the wash, and you know, to have uh, even a little bit of a debate uh, is a good thing for comics because it enters the consciousness in a way that it wouldn't. Store that from you guys. Uh, all I was thinking of saying about this is, um, you know, maybe these the growing pains we say we're experiencing. I mean, do they have anything to do with the fact that um, we don't have a strong Canadian comic book industry? Mm. Uh, that that the majority of the industry is working in the south, or does that have anything to do with it? See, I don't expect the public to have it all figured out, but I did expect the jurists right. to, have, to right. have already bought into the notion that it was a legitimate entry. And when you hear them live on air saying, well, I don't like it because it doesn't have enough words in it. There's not, like, literally, the one comment was, there's not enough writing in this book. And it's like, every page of that book is written. You know, it, there's so much that's written that you don't see in a book of that nature. It, it's, it's written and rewritten and, and, and then drawn in. It, it's like the notion that there's not as much work in it. I, I was kind of astonished by that, that they hadn't even come to terms with that notion. You know, Ali Velshi said that there's not, not it's too many pictures. This isn't helping kids read. <laughs> I'm looking for things that are going to help kids read. And, and all I remember when I was a kid was that's all I read. Right. Stan Lee. And it's not for kids either. <laughs> True believer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'm really in agreement with, with everything that's been said already. Uh, I, I think generally it has uh, benefited comics, uh, and I think it's benefited uh, Jeff, and I think it's benefited Top Shelf. I think last I checked, the uh, Essex County is still at the top of the, the, the book list numbers for Canadian comic publications. Um, so that's all great. Uh, and, you know, as far as uh, the publishing industry goes, I, McClellan and Stewart uh, are toying with comics uh, to a very minor but you know appreciable degree, and I expect that they'll they'll keep doing more. Uh, there are other uh, publishers, non-comic publishers, that are doing graphic material that. Uh, you know, wouldn't have even considered it uh, as little as five years ago. So uh, I get actually it, a lot of calls from educational, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, public. You know, they, they put out you know educational readers, and they want comics for that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a job for somebody. You know, yeah. that's, and that's uh, a and comics related. Lois. This is why for thing, twenty you know? years, Joe Kubert, and then the thirty years before him, Will Eisner, illustrated all of America's military. Men. Because they found out in World War II that if there's one thing a young soldier will read, it's a comic. He won't read a book, but he will read a comic. So they decided this is the best way to teach them how to boil a gun, how to uh, take an air filter off of a jeep. And so they, for the last 50 years, that's that's how they communicate this information. Yeah. Now they've got YouTube. That's right. <laughs> Hyperviolent video games. <laughs> Why they entered the war late, too busy reading comics. <laughs> and on a lighter note, I've always used Canada as like a get out of this job card. Right. Because you know, you'll get guys badgering you to do things that you may not particularly want to do them. And uh, Marvel were trying to talk me into doing a, uh, an ecstatics uh, book. And I really didn't want to do it. And so I told the editor, okay, look, I won't do the ecstatics, I'll do the little green potato guy, dude. And it'll be like Wolverine Duke, the ultimate team up. But it's got to take place in Toronto. <laughs> and I want all the main action on College Street. And you have to get parts of Mel Lastman, this is America. And 
you know, Milligan phones me up two hours later and goes, Right, no problem. You, you tell me a bit about College Street.